now, happy to welcome to the show legendary guitarist known best for his work with Scorpions, Electric Sun, and uh, his incredible groundbreaking work as a solo artist as well. We welcome to the show the one and only Yuli John Roth. Yuli, how are you? Hey, Eddie. So good to hear your voice again. You too. It's been a bit. Are you in the U.S. yet, <laughs> yeah. or are you still in Germany? No, not yet. No, we're flying, uh, flying out in two days' time or three days' time. Um, I'm in, I live in the UK, so I'm in the UK at the moment. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, you, I was just looking over your schedule, and you've got a lot coming up here in America. It's always great when you get to the U.S., and I guess uh, we'll start off with the, the Sky Academy, which is happening in Long yeah. Beach, March 29th through April 1st, which, correct me if I'm wrong, Yuli, but is it basic? It sounds like it's basically a, a, a huge clinic, right? What, instructional event? <laughs> no, it's more. It's much more than a clinic. You know, we did the first Sky Academy at the UCLA in 2006, um, and that was very successful. Um, then we did several um, over the years, but I haven't been doing one for 10 years. This is my first one, and it, it hasn't been uh, much advertised. We uh, kept it low-key, you know, and, but I'm really looking uh, forward to doing it. It's basically uh, difficult to explain. You have to um, check my website to see what it is, but it's way more than a guitar clinic. It's, it's, uh, it's also about our own minds, you know, about um, how to improve, you know, as players, as musicians, you know. Um, and there's, there's much more to it than just playing the guitar, you know. And, and that's it, basically. Is there something, is there, if you were not an, a very accomplished guitar player, is there something uh, to attend uh, the, this event, uh, the Sky Absolutely. Academy, that people yeah, would take from it? I mean, there it? are quite a few spectators, and they, they, and, so, and not everybody even is a guitar player. I'm talking about a lot of different things there. It's all about inspiration, creativity, you know, how to get into the zone, um, etc. You don't even need to be a guitar player to benefit from that, you know? Um, so we've always at Sky Academy had uh, other people there as well who don't play guitar, and they seem to get something out of it, you know. So, yeah. And if people want to sign up for this, they can do so at your website. Is, is it UJR? They do at my website, Uli, ulijohnroth.com. You find me on the Internet, you know. Okay. And, uh, you yeah, know, it's all there. And how long does it go for? Is it a multi-day event or is it just one day? Yeah. No, it's four days. It's basically three full teaching days, um, and uh, the fourth day is kind of complimentary, you know. It's, uh, yeah, so it's it's really a three-and-a-half-day event, yeah. So once you do that in, in Long Beach, and then, then from there you start a tour here in America, right? One and a half months nonstop going all over. They're still booking a few dates in Texas, I understand, uh, towards the back end. Yeah, it's a very long tour, and I'm really looking forward to it because um, uh, just prior to the uh, epidemic, I, I was uh, scheduled to play 70 shows in the States. So I had a massive tour book for a one-man solo tour. Uh, called Interstellar Sky Guitar. So I thought I'm going to pick up where that one left because we didn't play a single show. We played a few in Europe, but then uh, COVID hit and lockdown started. So, um, yeah, I'm bringing um, that in the first half of the evening. So, But we're doing actually two shows that evening. The first half is, is myself on stage, um, alone with the guitar and the large screen. I'll do some talking. It's called An Evening With. I'm playing uh, quite a few new pieces, which I wrote especially for this occasion. Um, they're not really heavy-duty rock there, but they're very musical, very melodic, and I like them a lot. And I've got an orchestra on the screen. I'm playing some of my Vivaldi Four Seasons, which you have heard before, I remember. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm playing some Mozart, 
But I'm also introducing my new book, um, which is called In Search of the Alpha Law, which comes out uh, at, the, at around the time of the tour. And I'm doing a TED Talk, like 15 minutes, really uh, introducing that book. And all ties in with, with, with the music of the evening, which the, the book has a lot to do with music, you know. Then in the second half, we do an intermission. It's a three-hour something show. In the second half, I'm bringing my full band, and we're doing a full-on, no-holds-barred rock set with a lot of the early Scorpions classics, Tokyo Tapes Revisited, um, of course, some Electric Sun, and, and, and of course, some Jimi Hendrix when I play. Uh, and, and that's it, you know. It's a full, full-on program for the States. Oh, actually, it gets worse <laughs> because <laughs> in the afternoon, I'm also ta- uh, doing a guitar master class in the same venue every evening um, for those who really can't get enough. You know, by the end, they'll be really sick of me, but there you go. <laughs> you know, I mean, after my three hours, just, I, I actually don't have any complaints usually because uh, the, the program is very varied and we're playing a lot of very different stuff. So it, it doesn't get boring. And um, yeah, so. No, I, I can uh, I can attest to it not getting boring. And look, I'm not a guitar player, and I'm still yeah. amazed watching you play. I came to see you, I don't remember when it was. It was a few years back, and I, I was somewhere you happened to be. might have been Texas or something. I vaguely remember where it was, but I was walking. No, I, I it was up north, but I do remember you were there. It was very kind of you to come. Uh, yeah, yeah, but it was fantastic. I mean, I, I remember I was in that town, wherever it was, and I, I didn't even know you were playing, and I saw you were there, and I was like, oh, my gosh, and I went in, and I... I think I only yeah. caught the back end uh, of the night, but it was just okay. absolutely brilliant uh, to hear you play. And yes, it won't get boring because you you just said you're 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 changing up what you're doing, and then you come out with all those great '70s Scorpions tunes in the second half. Yeah, I mean, and I always and I always improvise also, so every night is different. You know, I mean, even if I play a track like Dark Lady. Every night has a completely middle, different middle part. I'm making it up as I go along, and sometimes I get it really right. You know, not <laughs> always, but that's the danger element, and that's what I like the most, you know, to really go out there on the limb. And we do the same with Sales of Sharon. We have a large uh, sections in the middle that are completely off the cuff. Anything could happen. And that, yeah, that is very much what I like. Even in the first half, I've got this piece called uh, Passage to India. I'm playing it on my ninth string um, uh, acoustic sky guitar, nylon. And I'm basically, a lot of it, it's just completely free flow improvisation. I never know what's going to happen next. Um, And, yeah, I find that... I take myself on the journey with that and hopefully the audience too. You know, when I get it right, then it's quite something, you know. But uh, when you're completely free flow, uh, of course, you know, it depends, you know, not every night uh, you're on your best behavior and um, I'm dependent on the inspiration. You know, most of the time it's there, you know, but we will see. It's a long uh, tour, and I'm going to be challenged to just, uh, yeah, (laughs) deliver every night. Well, yeah, you're doing a three-hour show, and then, like you said, each day you're doing this this, uh, seminar or this uh, one and a half hours, yeah, and all the usual meet and greets on top. (laughs) I mean, I'd be beat, you know. But my secret is um, I've got my tour bus there. I've got my little room in the tour bus. So before every show, you will find me curled up like some kind of squirrel or a cat. I'll sleep. (laughs) And if I don't have that sleep, look, I'm nigh on 70 years old, you know. So (laughs) I can still play the same as when I was 21. But I I do need that little cat nap. And if I don't have it, I can feel the difference in the show, you know. So that's my secret, you know. I'm sometimes just conk out backstage and and I'll sleep. (laughs) Have you been working on new music at all? I've written uh, so much new music. I uh, for last year I recorded a lot of music at Dieter Dirk's studio. You remember Dieter oh, Dirk? Yeah, of course, yeah. The legendary Scorpions producer. Sure. And um, yeah, we recorded a lot of stuff. 
Um, I'm several of the pieces that I've recorded. I'm playing on this tour uh, for the first time in America. Um, I haven't. We haven't finished any mixing yet, so uh, I, I don't want to promise anything. But yes, I have written a lot of new stuff, and and I'm quite pleased with it. You, you know, I'm curious, you, you know, famously for people that don't know, I mean, you left Scorpions around 1979. Um, the band had a big catalog of music, a lot of success around the world with you in the band. Not so much here in America. In America, the band didn't really get known till much later. But during your era, which is so loved, especially by guitar players, when, when you left the band back then, it was to pursue exactly what you've done the last 40 plus years, right? I mean, all of this it, stuff yeah. was really what your vision was as to why you left such a successful band, right? Yes, Eddie. Um, you know, uh, it was a purely artistic decision and uh, I didn't really have a choice because uh, during 1978, when we did, just before we actually recorded Tokyo Tapes, I started writing weird stuff. I started writing Earthquake, you know, a 10 minute um, guitar extravaganza with a symphonic beginning where it sounded like some mini Beethoven, would be Beethoven uh, 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 symphony. That stuff had no place in the Scorpions, and I knew it. And and I and the, and I wrote more and more of that stuff, apart from uh, Sales of Sharon. You know, so I took Sales of Sharon, I gave that to the Scorpions, Your Light, you know, some other stuff. But my new stuff just didn't fit. And I didn't, uh, you know, and I knew my time was up. I had five amazing years in that band. We had a great time. I loved being there. We never had any arguments. We were a great band internally and externally. And yes, we already had gold albums in uh, Japan. And it was obvious the success was in the room. It was getting bigger by the minute. And um, but my time was up, you know, and I wasn't really so success driven. I was really and still am a, a music kind of freak, you know, or, you know, artistic expression for me was the most important thing and still is. That's why I took the hard way, you know, and I said, OK, I'm going to leave this cozy environment and I'm going to um, just produce myself and start from scratch. Having said that, Electric Sun, we did three albums, and in America, yeah, it was an insider tip, but it was actually also quite successful in its own right. I mean, we packed, packed places like Country Club and up and down the country, you know, so it wasn't as big as Scorpions, but it was, um, it was something, and a lot of the audience that are coming today also were ba there back then, 85, you know. And uh, I remember what? it fondly. Well, it was, was not supposed to be a quote-unquote commercial because that I wasn't interested in that, you know. Right. Uh, the Scorpions were the masters of that. The Rudolf and Klaus are such a great songwriting team for, for these things. Um, you know, and I was always the one who was uh, more um, way out there, you know. I didn't really care so much about the commercial aspect. I just cared about exploring new avenues and entering a new uh, musical um, arena and exploring it. And that's what I did. And what in the that? early 80s, I was completely against the street. Everybody was doing hair bands and um, corporate rock. Um, and I didn't. I was following kind of the Hendrix line, mixing that up with classical influences. And I think the only other two guys who did that at that time were... Frank Marino and Robin Trower, you know. Yeah. But all the other bands, you know very well what they did, the Scorpions, and they, they went, they became really big, you know, doing these things. So great songwriting, but it wasn't my scene anymore, you know. What, what was, Yuli, I'm curious, when you told Scorpions that you were going to leave and go do your own thing, uh, what was, did, did Klaus and Rudolph try to talk you out of it or did they realize you were going on a different path and said, yeah, go ahead, what you're doing isn't going to work for us? They did. The first time uh, this came up was in 75, just before we were doing um, uh, the Entrance album. I got a phone call from the management of Ma Manfred Mann. Do you remember Manfred Mann? Sure, yeah. Yeah, um, they used to be really big in Europe at that time. They were much bigger than, than Scorpions. We supported them on some tours. And they were a great band. I really liked them, you know. 
And the Manfred man saw us play, and he basically said, okay, do you want to be the guitar player, you know? And I was tempted, because it was uh, an interesting constellation, and he had really good musicians. Um, so, by Klaus and Rudolf, they talked me out of it. Um, all night long, we were sitting there, and by the end, I just said, okay, I'll stay. So, <laughs> I stayed in the band, and it was probably um, the right thing to do. Um, but when this came in, in 1977, after, just after um, taking my force, I I mentioned it to them. I, you know, I met with Rudolf and then I met with Klaus. They knew that I, I couldn't be persuaded because I had made up my mind, you know. And it was just one of these decisions. It was, you know, that my destiny was not to be in that band at that time anymore. And of course, I could have stayed there. I could, and, and they would have gone on to great success. I would have not destroyed their songs. On the contrary, you know, I always supported Rudolf's songwriting, and he supported mine. I would have probably written more stuff like Sir of Sharon, and they would have written uh, Rock You Like a Hurricane and, and all mm-hmm. that, you know. But yeah. uh, it was not to be. And, and and I did my, yeah, I went on to my own thing, and and, and I still am. You know, you're going to be, you may know this, but you're going to be in the U.S. the same time they are because I'm in Las Vegas now, a a second home. They're doing another run here in Vegas. I know you're going to be out on the road, but there's been times where you've gotten up and jammed with them uh, over the, uh, since you've been out of the band, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, there was a period when we did it uh, a lot. Uh, That started in 2005. From 2005 to 2011, we did quite a few shows and sometimes big stadiums, sometimes um, tours in France, Greece, Germany, uh, wherever, England. Uh, But then that stopped. They became a little more corporate. And because when I'm there, of course, it's always, I'm bringing a certain danger element that because I'm, you know, doing things differently. I think nowadays they just don't want their cage rattled. They they just do their thing, you know, which is fine. Yeah, yeah. So we haven't been doing that for a few years. And I think the last time was in Japan um, at at the Loud Park Festival, if I remember correctly. Having said that, Rudolf was my guest um, on that tour that you saw, my 50th anniversary tour in Japan in Sun Plaza Hall. Um, I invited Rudolf and he came and it was great. We had a great time on, on stage together. We did Wilbur and Sky and all the, the songs. And it was lovely having him there, you know, because uh, we we get on like a house on fire, you know. It's like, um, yeah, stuff like that doesn't go away, you know. It's like well, who knows? Members. Maybe maybe you find an off night on your tour and you make it over to Vegas and, and drop in and see the guys and get up there and do Sales of Sharon or something. I know I'd love to see that. Anything is possible. We will see. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, man, I'll let you go. I, 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 you know, I always think I'm so glad you're coming back to America. I'm absolutely going to try to catch a show. Anybody that plays guitar uh, and loves the art of guitar playing should absolutely go uh, to your website, which is yulijohnroth.com and get all the information and get all the dates because it's extraordinary seeing you. I always think, Yuli, of the time when I was doing my old TV show, you came on and I tell the audience this all the time. I called Kirk Hammett from Metallica. And I said to Kirk, I want you to come and do my show in LA. And he said, Oh, I'm, I'm surfing. I'm in Hawaii. And I said, well, the other guest is Yuli John Roth. (laughs) And he got right off the surfboard and he was there. And I'll never forget. He walked into the studio. He had his guitar and he walked straight into your dressing room. He was in there for like an hour and he came out. I said, what the hell were you doing? And he said, I was getting a guitar lesson from Yuli. (laughs) (laughs) And he was good. I mean, he did uh, Sandra Sharon and yeah, he was good. Absolutely. And then remember yeah. that night we all he took us all out to that club in Hollywood and we were out all night having some drinks. That was a oh, great yeah, night. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Soho we House. In a strange club. Yeah, there's some typical <laughs> rock star club. I'd never yeah. been there. 
Yeah. <laughs> I've yeah. not been there since. Oh, it was yeah. like a membership club. That's that's above yeah, my pay yeah, grade, yeah. but that was Kirk's place. Probably, it's, uh, probably a thousand dollars, um, you know, <laughs> to, to just get in uh, for an hour or something like that. Well, <laughs> it, I'm sure it doesn't hurt uh, uh, Kirk, you know. But no. actually, talking about Kirk and, uh, um, no, it, it was Kirk. Yeah, and uh, not Lars, no. Um it was two of them, but we, we played the Sunset Strip, you know, we played uh, the Whiskey, I think, on that same tour, and Kirk um, was uh, getting a pizza somewhere, and he, he didn't know I was playing, so they saw I was playing, so they all turned up, you know, it was nice, and... Uh, you know, the whiskey is like weird. It's like the, there's a staircase there up to the dressing yeah. room. He yeah, actually sat on, sat on that staircase, braving my my horrendously loud Marshall amp, or actually it was a Black Star amp, um, it, which was pointed at the staircase because I was pointing it away from the audience, not to have any casualties in the audience. And you know, he took it on the chin, you know, uh, just smoking. And he, he probably didn't hear anything else but my guitar. Um, I'm sure that's I, all he wanted. Yeah. <laughs> I hope he had earplugs, you know, otherwise, uh, yeah, I'm, you know, Metallica could, could sue me. You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, man, I don't oh, think that's going to happen, but uh, everybody go see Yuli and his very loud guitar, which is the way you want it. Starts I'm not in Arizona. that loud anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm very well behaved, particularly in the first half of the show. You will be amazed. I'll be a very good boy, very super quiet. <laughs> it's just music with the orchestra. You cannot be so loud with the orchestra, you know, you're drowning it all out. In the second half, I play like a real man, uh, you know, <laughs> although nowadays you shouldn't say that because that's not politically correct. Right? You can say, I don't, you can, I don't do can PC. Say, you're all good here. You can say that in the States. You, and my show, you show. can, yes. You can absolutely. You are in safe but ground here as far as I'm concerned. there's women who can really play. You know, yes. when I started out, that was impossible. The only one was Jennifer, uh, who was great. And then, uh, yeah, nowadays you, you get quite a few, you know. Jennifer Batten, so she was I, with I, you I, actually. The show that I saw, she was your opening act. I remember that, oh, Jennifer Batten. Okay, okay. You didn't see the you didn't see that uh, 50th anniversary show. You saw the Ultimate Guitar Experience. Yes. With. Um, with Andy, with Andy Timmons, Andy Timmons and, Jennifer. and Jennifer, yes. Great guys, both of them. I love to uh, playing with them every night. Jennifer is like out of this world. She is, she, first of all, she's an amazing trooper. She's got such an amazing attitude. Whenever I want to quote, you know, a person like uh, for, you know, for having a great attitude to get things done, Jennifer is like right up there. You know, she's like a, one woman amazing and then she can really play guitar so we had some evenings every night we were jamming at the end we played little wing and sometimes you know wow she was totally there and actually yeah. andy is just also beautiful he was such a nice musician nice guy i loved that tour it was really nice with these people yeah yeah, Absolutely. it was good. I, I that was the show that I saw for sure. It was real, real good. And oh, you're right. There, there are a lot of really great women playing guitar. I've had have them on this show all the time. Whether it's Orianti or Nita Strauss or many oh, others Orianti, that are she's very good. doing yeah, great. Too. Yeah, yeah. I haven't yeah, met great stuff. Nita yet. No. Okay. Well, I won't keep you, um, Eddie, <laughs> the Ultimate Pro. And thanks for having me on your show. And and I hope to see you at the Iridium or wherever. Anytime, yeah. uh, and I will definitely come see you somewhere on the run. I, I, I wish you cool. safe travels over to the U.S., and I'm glad you're going to be here for a bit and uh, hope to connect when you are. Uh, everybody go see Yuli John Roth. You can go to his website for all the dates. The tour starts April 2nd in Arizona, runs through Houston, May 18th. As Yuli said, maybe a few more shows are going to get added, and also you've got the option of the seminar during the day, if you'd like, on any of those stops. And if you're in Southern California, Long Beach, uh, March 29th through April 1 is the Sky Academy. Everything is on Yuli's website. Safe travels. I'll talk to you soon, okay? Thank you so much, Eddie. Have a good one. Bye. You too. Bye-bye. There he goes, everybody. Yuli John Roth, legendary guitar player, and uh, it's been a bit since we spoke. Great to connect with him. And, uh, again, if you are not 
If you're a Scorpions fan and you know, you know, the stuff that everybody knows from Scorpions in the U.S., if you know Rocky Like a Hurricane, Still Loving You, you know, all that stuff, which is all great. I mean, I think it's great. Matias is great. Don't get me wrong. But the 70s Scorpion stuff is a whole nother trip, and it's really cool, and it's really good, and it's a different, you know, you could hear it. You know, Yuli brought a different thing. He is, as he is openly says all the time, he is a huge descendant of Jimi Hendrix, He and, and but he brought his own thing to it. And among the guitar playing community, he is absolutely revered as one of the greats. And it's a shame because we talk about this all the time. All of these lists will come out, all of these polls, top 100 guitarists and all of that. And there are so many amazingly influential, accomplished players that are not on those lists because they didn't get mainstream popularity. That's all it really comes down to. There's so many great players, but the people that are always in the conversation, it's just going to be who were you exposed to, who do you know about? Yuli, right there in that last tour, mentioned a guy, Andy Timmons. Andy is an amazing guitar player. Andy started his career as the guitar player in Danger, Danger. And then after a couple records, left kind of similar to the story Yuli told for Leaving Scorpions. He wanted to do a different thing. He wanted to do instrumental music. He wanted to go out and do his own path and explore guitar playing more than just locking into the commercial hard rock. And that's a ballsy thing to do if you think about it. Because like Yuli just said, he could have hung in there and played Rocky like a hurricane, but it wasn't in his heart. So he he made the decision to leave a band that, make no mistake, when he left Scorpions, they weren't big in America, but they were very big in other parts of the world. Uh, that Tokyo Tapes live album is a classic. I mean, that was done with a big audience in Japan. He's on that record. So if you think about it, you know, leave a band like Scorpions about to bro- commercially broke in other parts of the world a couple years away from breaking in America and to say, ah, oh, it's just not feeling this anymore. I want to just explore guitar and I want to do all this crazy guitar shit and you know, do a totally different trip. I mean, that's a ballsy thing to do. But he's content doing it. I mean, even if he's in clubs or small theaters, he's content doing it. But he never, there's so many guitar players that fit this category, made a huge mark on, a, on guitar players like Kirk Hammett and others who, will, who worship a guy like Yuli, but never crossed the bridge into mainstream, everybody knows his name, commercial lists, all that shit. Uh, it's really interesting when you think about it, how that works. But it just, it just at the end of the day comes down to popularity and who is exposed to what and who knows what. So thanks to Yuli for some time there. It was great to visit with him. That was, I think it was the first time in the history of this show we ever went back-to-back interviews from one to another with no break or no reset or anything because we had Pilsen. And then I didn't want to do a break because Yuli was calling from England So I didn't want to leave him hanging through a break. So you just got, uh, you know, about an hour uninterrupted of great chats with Jeff Pilsen, talking foreigner and machine and more. And also Yuli John Roth. Great stuff in both of those. Hope you enjoyed it. (laughs) 